Thank you so much for this opportunity. And I'm very sorry for not being able to be there with you. Um, I can't share my screen or uh, do I share direct with the screen or the presentation? I probably need some technical assistance here. You can share your screen. You, you Directly my screen. Okay, all right. We can see it, yeah. Okay. So thank you again um, for the opportunity to present and to talk about this um, initiative that I have been part of with a group of um, surgeons, cardiologists from around the world, um, where we were trying to develop, um, I think it fits very well actually with what has been discussed so far about uh, unified systems, uh, trying to understand in this a fairly difficult population that you're all dealing with, trying to understand what is the system that we could be uh, looking at that can actually compare apples to apples or oranges to oranges, like we like to say here in the US. Um, so um, I will talk about the global recommendations that we started developing and some of the process that we've gone through and what those um, look like. First, um, I always like to discuss what we're trying to address. And uh, we are trying to address a huge burden of congenital heart disease globally that sees about um, over 200,000 deaths uh, every year that we have uh, people, over 13 million people living with the disease globally, um, which translates it to uh, many, many years of life lost, as you can see. And the, to point out that um, the last two numbers that 96% of the mortality is in low and middle income countries like India, um, and 70% of the mortality is in infants. And so I think these two numbers tell us where the biggest interventions need to happen. Uh, we need to focus on saving infants and newborns. And obviously we need to focus on building more capacity in low and middle income countries. And I think these recommendations that I will discuss um, really try to address that. Um, again, this was data from the Global Burden of Disease study. Um, and I just pulled out some of the countries that um, India and some of the surrounding countries just to point out that congenital heart disease is now the third cause of infant mortality in India and uh, first in China, second in Bangladesh, first in Sri Lanka, um, third in Nepal. And, and this is very important, I think, to look at um, as you are talking to your governments. And uh, we have seen over the years that the Indian government has started actually to pay more attention to pediatric cardiac services and to, um, uh, to be thinking about how to address congenital heart disease. Of course, a lot more can be done. But when it's the third cause of infant mortality, we have a great case to make. Um, Children's Heartlink published um, uh, this series of papers called the Invisible Child Series, where we really uh, made, um, started with actually the recommendations, and we made recommendations that investments need to be made and um, increasing capacity, closing the data gap, um, uh, basically collecting information of where the children are born and, uh, you know, what are they dying of or what, what's happening with our services. Um, building a pediatric cardiac workforce and financing pediatric cardiac care. So these four areas, four categories are very important to be when we're thinking about planning for pediatric cardiac services. And I think the recommendations that I'll present um, will speak specifically to capacity and infrastructure. So this was um, done under the um, a Global Initiative for Children's Surgery. This is a kind of a volunteer, loosely based organization um, that was founded after the Lancet Commission of Global Surgery, which was in um, 2015, I believe. Um, and 16. And um, the Lancet Commission really spoke about essential surgical services, did not discuss specific services, surgical services for pediatrics. And so a group of uh, people interested in or working in pediatric surgical areas um, got together and formed the Global Initiative for Children's Surgery, um, which as we call it GICS. Um, and um, it's a global consortium of providers, institutions, organizations, anyone can join. Um, it's a really minimal um, uh, membership fee. And really the goals are to kind of analyze the current state um, and develop uh, global, regional, national, and local priorities, um, as well as bring uh, resources to address um, those priorities. 
Um, they've had a number of publications as a you know, consortium, as, as a group, um, many um, uh, policy actually recommendations, um, as well as uh, specific recommendations on uh, what they call the optimal resources for improving care, where they uh, recommend what a pediatric surgery, general surgery should look like, for example. Um, the um, Cardiac Care Working Group um, actually was started in 2018 after a meeting that happened in Valor, at CMC Valor. Um, and the goal of that cardiac um, surgery uh, working group was to develop recommendations for planning and development of pediatric cardiac services. So again, those uh, potentially minimum necessary requirements. And actually one was a roadmap of what would that look like, the infrastructure and the capacity needs, um, and kind of planning for the help to uh, for facilities to plan to develop pediatric cardiac surgery, um, as well as a population level recommendations for policymakers. So this would be for the government. Um, we have not worked on the last one yet, um, but uh, what I'm presenting to you is the um, facility level recommendations. And these are just um, some of the people that we have received input from. We actually have more now on this list, but um, on the left, you see the cardiac care working group. Um, so these recommendations were actually borrowed from existing um, uh, such documents already. So I don't want to talk about this without um, mentioning the uh, national health system in England. They have an excellent document with pediatric congenital heart sur services um, specifications where they um, really discuss in detail what kind of infrastructure and staffing needs to be in place to address the needs on um, a national level. The is specific to England, um, as well as the Australian National Standards of Care for Childhood Onset Heart Disease, which are still actually being in review and um, quite interesting to, to read and initiated by or, and led by actually a patient um, family organization. And also I want to point out that in Australia, it's a care for childhood onset heart disease because it also includes rheumatic heart disease care, not just congenital heart. Um, Children's HeartLink also, you may be familiar with this pediatric cardiac care continuum, um, was part of this uh, incredible program that happened in Kerala in India, um, where um, this continuum of care was developed um, and kind of an assessment was done at each of those levels and um, the government implemented strategies to address specifically at the um, recognition stage and diagnosis and prioritization. Uh, but again, this is one uh, one other way to look at uh, what services would be would be needed to address the needs of all children with heart disease. And um, last to uh, you know one other framework that we used to develop the recommendations. Um, this was the WHO facility classification. So there's um, uh, they're not just the WHO, but there's um, the World Bank also has some which is this um, disease control priorities paper. Um, and so we um, decided actually to use um, the um, uh, DCP3 um, uh, classifications, uh, basically in, in each of those um, levels to propose what kinds of a pediatric cardiac service would need to be available and provided. So, um, we actually had given them names, pediatric cardiac services level one through uh, five. Um, and so at the first level, which is a health center, there's really just basic screenings. At the first level hospital, it's a very basic diagnostic cardiology, for example. Um, and cardiac surgery really appears only at um, level four and five. Um, uh, while at the other levels, at level three is uh, probably what we want to have. Uh, comprehensive screening and diagnostic cardiology. What we did um, is make recommendations in actually several domains. And the first one was the age and the complexity of the types of patients that would be seen. Um, also was general anesthesia available. What are the human resources that are needed um, and the required skills for those uh, people for the workforce there? Um, what infrastructure is necessary, equipment and supplies. And what was unique, I would say, about our recommendations is that we spoke, we have recommendations for quality and safety, 
very much relating to what was discussed uh, right before me in the um, two talks um, and understanding how um, what the outcomes are and how to improve them and how to continuously improve outcomes is a very important part of this field that um, it's it, it's great to see that it's being discussed in detail and that many programs are um, using different systems um, because it's a way of accountability for the patients to the patients and their families. So here are some examples. I'm not going to go in detail because there's very, it's, there's obviously a lot more detail. Um, but at the health center, for example, we are expecting that screenings would happen for um, congenital heart disease um, or for rheumatic heart disease if they're you know older children. Um, a recommendation on what kind of resources would be would be necessary and what aspects of quality and safety systems would have to be implemented at that level. Um, and uh, going all the way to the end at the um, level five, which is a referral hospital, probably a national children's hospital or uh, would be a, a cardiac um, center, a cardiac institute where we would have full services in terms of diagnostic cardiology, patient cardiology, inpatient cardiology, cath and cardiac surgery with um, the highest level, potentially the highest level of complexity of um, cardiac surgery performed. Um, and um, the equipment and supplies is um, obviously large, but um, as you can see, we try to outline what kind of skills would be required of um, the workforce um, and of the human resources and um, what infrastructure we would um, uh, be expecting at this level. So for us, the next steps would be, um, we're proposing a manuscript um, and working on that. Um, we're also developing the population level recommendations for the regional national policy development. Um, we're actually looking at discussions with professional societies, wherever that's feasible. Um, several groups have seen it and are and, you know discussing it and thinking about it. Um, but what we try to do with this, um, uh, with, uh, with this document is to give some sort of a, a, a framework or a roadmap for when um, hospitals would like to develop pediatric cardiac services to think about what is necessary, what is that multidisciplinary team that everybody's talking about, you know, how many nurses should we have, um, depending on the volume of patients that we would be seeing, what type of cardiology skills we would need, um, and what training would, you know, our cardiac surgeons would need to have, for example, if that's necessary. Um, if there's interest, I, you know, welcome anyone to contact me. We can share the drafts. Uh, we're still collecting input, even though the survey, the um, official survey has been closed. But um, if anyone's interested, please feel free to email me and to contact me, and I'd be happy to um, take your input. And I think I'll stop sharing.